Well, good evening, good people. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, being part of the Joe Blue Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Hope everybody's had a great Monday, had a great live stream tonight. You know, you can feel things are beginning to ramp up just a little bit. We've been through, of course, the tragic end of the season, you know, us losing to the 49ers, to watching the Super Bowl again without the Cowboys being there. Through free agency, the combine, the draft, a little more free agency, dealing with Catboy, OTAs, and now it's the silly season where there's really nothing going on other than seeing your players doing workouts, you know, workout clips and tapes, and of course all of the ESPN, Fox Sports 1, and CBS Sports, and NFL Network, and all of those guys doing their list and the hype. A lot of people tune out. A lot of people are kind of like, uh, I'll get back to you when things actually start happening. But people are beginning to start coming back a little bit. You know, we're, we are literally 10 days away from some camps opening up. We are about two weeks from the Dallas Cowboys tomorrow. Two weeks from tomorrow, the Dallas Cowboys charter gets there in Oxnard. They'll have the first practice on the 26th. And from then, it's not much time. We're under 60 days before the kickoff of the season. It, it's hard to believe. We are under 60 days. Wow. I got so much to do between now and the start of the season. You know, we were trying to get the red. The goal was to get the red brick house done by football season because my wife put it that, you know, when football season starts, you're not going to be going down the country and, and doing work on the red brick house and things. And, um, that's not necessarily going to be the case. During the middle of the week, I, I, I'll be able to do that. Go down Tuesday, Wednesday, come back Thursday for Thursday night football so I can get two nights in. I got my screaming set so I can actually live stream now from anywhere. So, you know, you, you work ways to make things happen. And that's where I'm not going to miss my football. Um, I'm getting excited because three weeks from now, I'll be in Oxnard. I haven't been to training camp since, I want to say, 2018. So it's been several years. I'm sure things have changed quite a bit. First time I went to training camp, it used to be uh, right now where there's houses. It used to be where the entrance was in the parking. There was actually trees there. And they had like a cage set up. So you had those who had tickets. You could go sit in the bleachers right there. It was shaded. Now there's a wall there. And so you've got this short wall and, you know, down to the rope to the field. You know, of course, the players come in on that side and they have the tenant area and, the, uh, of course, the high price seating and things that's over there um, for extra access. So we'll see how it's changed this year. I heard last time it was $40 for parking, but a little high. But, hey, you know, Jerry's going to make every cent out of you. And speaking of making every sense, we're hearing that there has been zero progress in Dalton Schultz's contract. That's not to say that they won't get it done between now and 3 o'clock on Friday Eastern Time. But quite frankly, there's really no incentive for them to get it done. Because, in fact, the Cowboys could save money on his contract by not signing him to a long-term deal. I know you're saying, what you talking about, Mark? Well, here's the thing. David, David Naku just got his deal done. Averages $14.5 million a year. Great money. But you look at David Naku's um, statistics he had under 500 yards in receptions 
Dalton Schultz had over 800. You look at Dalton Schultz's numbers, you got to say you're at least starting right there where his ended. They keep him on the cap on the tag this year. Right now, it's 13.9. No, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. 10.9 million dollars. It's actually cheap right now for a tight end. Looking at next year's cap number, it's going to be somewhere around 13. So technically, keeping him on the cap this year and the cap next year will be cheaper for the next two years than what it would be for, like, say, David Dacuse. You don't have the signing bonus, the guaranteed money or anything. The guaranteed money is the contract, the franchise tag. And it only commits you for one year. Now, technically, if they were to sign into a long-term deal, what usually happens is because you have the signing bonus and the guaranteed money, that's prorated over the life of the contract. So what does that mean? That means they could actually save some cash on this year's cap. You could end up having, say, a $4 million cap hit this year, and then next year it escalates. So you could save some money now and then have it to spend later. Or you could keep it right where it is, and if you decide that you know Ferguson is going to be a better option, then you're not committed for a year down the road, I mean, other than this season. So that's kind of where we are with that situation. The owners of the Cowboys, unless they can get like a great deal, there's no sense of urgency to get this done for this year. It just isn't. If they go through this year and it's a great year for them, okay. Um, if they don't get a contract they like, they can franchise tag one more year. So unfortunately, for Dalton Schultz, he's got no leverage in this situation right now. Now, that was different than, of course, when you had, of course, Dak Prescott, you know, where the franchise tag was 32 the first year, and then all of a sudden it jumped up to like 38 and a half. Then you're looking at it and saying, that's a hard number that we cannot absorb. And that's why they had to get his deal done the second year. Same thing with Demarcus Lawrence. Demarcus Lawrence. You know, it was 20, going to be like 21, 22 million dollars at the time. So it behooved them to get the long-term deal done. And then, of course, to finally restructure it, you know, down the road. Or to actually tear it up and start all over with a new contract. At this point, Stephen Jones, he didn't lie to us. He told us the beginning of the year. We don't look to sign any big name free agents. We don't. We believe in our own guys. That's exactly what he told us, and that's exactly what he did. So when he says that when Jerry's gone, we'll probably take less chances, we better believe him because they're not going to take risks. They're not. And they're not going to spend money. I don't know what they're saving it for. I still, in the back of my head, think that it still does not seem cowboy-esque because when you think of a cowboy you think of a maverick, you think about somebody that's a little bit wider, uh, wilder a person who doesn't conform to, to normal ideas and principles that will do some things that are a little bit off it just does not seem like it's the cowboy way not to take risks not to go with your instincts, not to do something different as opposed to just being safe because that's what it feels like it's is with Stephen Jones we're scared to make a mistake we're scared to take a risk we'll see if it works out for them I mean they did take some risks the year before with the Don Terry Poe's and the Gerald McCoy's and the Emerson Griffins and the Clinton High High Dixes but I don't think a single one of those made it through the season. And maybe that's what shaded them so hard at we believe in our own guys as opposed to guys on the street. No, I don't know. What I do know is 
I got to get up in the morning. I got to hit the road. I got to see a good old friend of mine, a man that I owe so much to because he taught me so much, my friend Alex. Alex is about 86 years old, and they have an old house that uh, has some termite damage, and I have to look at the flooring in there to see if I can fix it for him. And um, got to get down in the country and get this house together. Got to get the red brick house going because I want to be able to watch a football game from there and be able to live stream. I um shout out to PD. PD took video from Stuart Morrison's memorial service. And um, the whole Texas trip almost seems like it was a blur. Like it was like an out of body experience. I remember when we got to the bar that we were having the memorial service at. They asked me to speak, and um, I wasn't expecting that. And I don't remember what I said. I, I just don't. I just it was just it just came out of me. And Petey shared with me. She taped it, and she shared it with Tracy. And this morning, Tracy showed it to me. And I waffled on whether or not. I wanted to share it, but <clears throat> it was very emotional, and it was truly from the heart. When I come out here every night, I tell you to tell the ones that you love that you love them, because tomorrow's not promised, and you don't know if you're going to have the chance to again. Yeah. And watching that the first time, man, knowing that my buddy Stewart's not here anymore, man, it just hit me hard. The world has gotten crazy. So much violence, so much hate. So many loved ones lost. I pray that somehow we can turn this shit around. Tell the people you love, you love them. Because you might not get the chance again, y'all. I love you guys. And God willing, I'll see you tomorrow.